In this set of videos, we're going to talk about Butterworth filters. Butterworth filters are a specific type of low-pass filter. Here is the outline, kind of the approach for tackling this topic. We'll first just introduce what these Butterworth filters look like in the frequency domain in terms of their frequency response. What does their low-pass filter characteristic look like in the frequency domain? Then we'll talk about how we can design what we call a normalized filter. This normalized filter has a cutoff frequency of omega c equal to 1. So because it has a cutoff frequency equal to 1 radian per second, we call it a normalized filter. And once we learn how to design a filter like this, then we'll learn how to scale this low-pass filter design up to kind of arbitrary cutoff frequencies and gains. So this is kind of like our prototype filter, and then we'll modify it to get to the actual filter that we want. So once we understand kind of the background theory and math for doing things generally, then we'll work through a very specific design example. So that's our outline for this set of videos and charts. So first let's go to the introduction and just take a look at what these filters look like in the frequency domain. So here is basically the definition of a Butterworth filter. It's a low-pass filter, like I mentioned, and it's defined by an amplitude response with this equation. So the magnitude of our frequency response is equal to 1 over the square root of quantity 1 plus omega over omega c. Omega c is what we call the cutoff frequency of the filter, and this quantity is raised to the exponent 2 times n. n is what we call the filter order. So it's the order of the filter. And here are some plots for what the amplitude response looks like as a function of omega for different filter orders. So this right here is on a linear scale. Here's my amplitude response plotted on a linear scale between 0 and 1. Here is the amplitude response of the filter plotted on a dB scale between minus 30 dB and 0. So you can see what happens at low frequencies. We have a gain that is close to 1, and as frequency goes up, the gain of the filter rolls off and we start rejecting higher frequency components. The way that this transition occurs is highly dependent on the filter order. So if you have a low filter order, say 1 or 2, this rolls off kind of smoothly as frequency goes up. As your filter order increases, maybe to order 16, if you look at this magenta line here, it starts to look more kind of like a step function almost. It's very flat, there's a very sharp transition, and then here at higher frequencies it has a very low gain. So depending on what you want your actual filter amplitude response to look like, you can set the filter order appropriately to design a filter that has the frequency rule off that you like. So this is what we call a Butterworth filter. This is essentially the definition of it. And now what we'll start looking at is how we go about designing a filter like this in the S domain. We want to know how the amplitude response of this filter is related to poles and zeros and things like that in the complex S plane.